<laughs> Welcome back, subscribers. I'm going to try to make this one a little bit shorter. I've got a cold, and I may have the dreaded COVID-19. Pandemics indicate outbreaks of disease that spread to cover an entire region or the world. A pandemic can result in massive loss of life. But my wife says it's a man cold, and I know how to stop it. So I'm going to survive because I bought toilet paper and water. All right, to all the doomsday shoppers out there, I just spent 25 bucks on shitty, this might as well be sandpaper for my ass, because it's all that's left at Costco, because people are buying pallets of this crap. That shit has obviously been the hype to stop the infection, because if you go anywhere, you're out. Water's out, toilet paper's out. Toilet paper aisle. The major supermarket chains have now imposed limits. And I've also heard rumors that the virus spreads if you hit that dislike button. So I dare you. It's right over there. I dare you. Hit it. Hit it. You want to get sick? Hit that damn button. But speaking of man cold, aren't us riders just big babies in front of our significant others? Uh, stop right there. Not at the track. At the track, we're badasses. I could have my leg behind my head and I could be telling my buddy, grab my bike, dude. I can still finish the race. Just start, it's got electric start. I'm on it, I'm on it. Guys, lift me up, lift me up. And really internally, I'm going, oh my God, I'm dead. This is surgery for sure. But when we go home, we're just little in front of our significant others. But behind closed doors, you know, even man colds, Gotta take it out of us. So I want to just take a few seconds in silence to honor our significant others and the shit we put them through. Four, three, two, one. All right, that seems about enough. Let's start the video. Getting a great start, but guess who's going to get the whole shot? Chad Reed. The old guy still has some speed, and this crowd's coming to life. So just speaking of the track, I don't know if you guys saw my video on the Daytona and how stupid that circle was so you stop going into the whoops fifth gear pinned. And my channel artist, Serial, said it best. <laughs> if you notice, they took out those whoop sections too. It's supposed to be roundabout whoop section, wall, another whoop section, and they ended up making a moguls. So it was really fast because after the roundabout, you still got going super, super fast. And I was surprised because of that bottleneck, there wasn't more riders getting pinched off before that roundabout. And then that second, actually it was the third whoop section after the, the triple, and you're hauling ass. They made those whoops pretty dang big. And I said that I thought riders were possibly going to start crashing because you need to lane off that triple. The real fast guys are going to coast and then kind of preload into that whoop section, unweight the suspension so that they can get going in there. And some of the slower guys, like what I would do is land off that triple, coast, slam on my brakes, check my speed, and then try to accelerate through the whoops. And that's damn near impossible to try to accelerate through those whoops. I personally thought it should have been whoop section, then triple. I thought it would have been a lot safer. I like how Sexton split second decision, just decided to either go for the rider or the bike. He knows if he goes for the bike, he's gonna crash. So he takes out the rider in the face. Uh, I, I thought that was like, gee, thanks man, I, I appreciate it. But you know, these guys are out for a good qualifying spot. And it was good that the track crew ended up rolling those down because those whoops were way too big because of the speed coming into there after that triple. So <laughs> I thought, it should have been switched from the get-go, but who am I? I just like to piss and moan, but you guys obviously like to hear me piss and moan, so let's do some more. And because I'm on the track, I did like that tunnel jump and then that option where there was kind of like a little off camber and then inside that was really slow. I thought that that was going to be an epic place to brake check somebody. You know, when Webb has got Tomac on his ass, just slam on the brakes have that guy bump over and like fall over. I haven't seen a brake check in forever. I remember 
uh, McGrath doing it to Emic and making him fall. Maybe I can find that clip, but um, I think that would put just a little bit more personality. Yeah, you're being kind of a dick, but that's a perfect place to do it because it's one line. <laughs> if did you see Barsha after the little S turns, you know, go double, try to C bounce, triple on top in case, and still had enough oomph to then jump off again and make the rest of the rhythm. That's factory suspension right there, not to mention factory motor to have enough oomph to do that. But if you had just a, let's just say you had a stock bike, a stock bike, triple on that, bounce off, you then hit that next little lip and you'd endo. There's nothing that can beat factory suspension and it's why it's unobtainium. Yeah, us, we can spend 10 grand on A-kit stuff and I've only been privileged enough to ride once with it and I was able to ride a few Honda of Houston bikes back in the day. And it just, it made my tail go in between my leg because I was going, Jesus, I'm five seconds a lot faster on this bike. And it's a 250 four stroke. And then my race bike 450. It's, it's ridiculous at the elite level what these pieces and parts and just bikes can accomplish. Not to say that taken away from any of the riders because all the guys that are factory riders, they're they're damn good riders but if you just take those bikes and then compare them to the bikes that are outside the top 20 there's a significant difference oh absolutely moving on to the 250s we saw shane and smith kind of get together and smith decided to jump and go in deep to try to block shane you know just hold his line and he ended up just falling over well he did that last weekend as well and just a small little tip over you shouldn't be getting up like freaking out about your knee and there's something wrong there, um, whether it's an ACL or a meniscus tear or an MCL. You know, I know I've torn some ligaments in my knees before that didn't require surgery, and they hurt like a bitch. Anytime I barely fell, I wanted to die. It was awful. And so I think he's got some sort of injury that he's not telling us about, which is unfortunate for him. I I've said this a couple times in my last videos, if you've watched them. What is going on with Shane's mindset? It was, it was it was very humbling. Like I said last weekend, it was really tough to go through those times. But even Ralph was saying, "Oh, we gotta need a rejuvenation." Really the right term to use for Shane McElrath because he did win the season opener, but then he kind of fell back a little bit. We didn't see. What the f are these guys talking about? He won round one, and then he got a second, then he got a third, and then now he got a fifth. Hmm. Potentially, did he get a fifth because he's saying, oh my God, I got a third and the end of the world happens? Like, Jesus, come on. He's only 10 points behind, you know, Sexton in the championship. I, I, these guys say that they've got a mental coach and a mental coach should be telling him, stop putting yourself down when you're riding really well and you got a third. I mean, like, look at Sexton and Martin. Man, I had a, I struggled all day. Just didn't really feel good at the track. Was struggling to... Uh, I wouldn't say happy. How many times do you hear these guys, oh, finished second, like, just bike wasn't riding well and uh, just could have gone better. Man, this just really sucks. I got a nice bonus from the factory team for getting on the podium, but man, life just really, really sucks. That's BS. These guys need to change it. I think Jason Anderson's mindset, I know I've said it in the past, he's onto something. And now that I'm retired, because some of the books that I've read, I wish I knew a little bit more of how to set yourself up for success. These guys having a goal of, I want to win, that's great and all, but so does 40 other riders that sign up to race or in the night show. So there's only one rider that can win, and then there's 39 that come up short. So you go home with your tail in between your legs, and you're not boosting a positive mental attitude. It's, it's senile. I think it needs to be more of a systematic. Throw the, the goal of winning out the window and make it more of a systematic approach. Because then it'll just follow if you follow your system. Like, hey, I'm going to make sure that I run three tanks of gas out. I'm going to hit these whoops until I can go third gear pin through them. I'm going to do six 20-minute motos twice a week out at the track. You know, I think if you have more of those systematic approaches, 
and it's a goal that you can accomplish, you're going to be better off. And then the winning is just going to come. Not setting yourself up to fail because you, you and I both know that we can't predict how well Tomac rides or Roxon, you know, or Webb. They just have off days. That's what happens. So <laughs> there's no wonder why <laughs> racers, including myself, have mental issues after the fact. Because we spend our entire lives giving us shit over the stupid small stuff. And it shouldn't be that way. We should change it. And I kind of have to retract my statement as far as the pro circuit guys having a hard time. Because March Banks made it happen. Qualified fifth, I believe. I'd have to look. Uh, but whole shot to finish. Won the race. So good for him. Maybe they heard what I said. And something, you know, had a little magic juju going on saying we need to prove Johnny Hopper wrong. Uh, trying to make myself feel like I'm bigger than I actually am. Anyway, next thing I want to talk about is Tomac, Kenny, and Webb. Dude, Webb, just his racecraft, being able to get through Barsha and these guys and Anderson and being able to have eyes behind your head with Tomac on your heels because you know Tomac is faster start had to make some passes with uh, Barsha and then got around uh, Anderson and uh, felt Eli there and you know we were had a pretty good pace going and then uh, he was able to get around me and but he's a little bit more got a more of a systematic approach to the track and he qualified third this weekend which was really good and I thought he personally popped um, after lap eight or so because they ended up doing 18 laps to be honest I, I liked it when it was the 20 laps a little bit even longer I mean it the eight, 18 laps feels kind of short just because you're used to doing, you know, 26 or 27 laps in the in the stadium environment. Yeah, I agreed. It. I didn't think it was uh, too bad tonight. I mean, uh, I feel like I've raced it here when the track's definitely tougher. So uh, it, it did seem like a short main event. Then you see these guys get off the track and they look like they could go do another 18. Yeah, they're sweating, but they're not sitting there going, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. So take that for what it's worth. I'm going to dub Tomac the machine because he sort of does the Mike LaRocco thing. Towards the end of the race, he makes stuff happen. I wanted to look at the lap times because I know at around lap seven, Webb was able to get a little bit of di distance from Tomac, dropping his lap time to a 110. But then after that, you know, he kind of fell off. And I thought Tomac would be down in those real low 110s as he was catching Kenny and I thought Kenny was gonna sort of be out front and then lose it you know just slow down because of the lead he had because you know that guy is going back to the pits going I lost by a second could I have just done a something different to win you know to make my lap times just a little bit quicker maybe lap 14 to 15 just an extra two percent effort and he won and won the race but looking at the lap times are pretty interesting. Webb's fastest was a 110 on lap 7. And then he kind of started to drop off, you know, back to the 112, 114s. And at the end of the race, 113. And then Tomac, his fastest, he did a couple 110s at lap 10. And then lap 13, 110. And then his final lap was a 112. And this is after the track is getting even more gnarly. I don't know how these guys are able to lower their lap times towards the end there because his average was a 112. Uh, Webb's average was a 112.6, so like a half a second slower. And, you know, just interesting looking at Kenny's, his first lap was his fastest with a 110.1. And his second lap, 110. So that's how he got that, that lead. And perhaps maybe if he would have just kept doing that. But he was doing 111s, lap 8, lap 10. And then you see right at the end, lap 18, he jumped back down to that 111 to try to pass Tomac back. But right around the time when Tomac passed him, he was doing 112s, 114s. So you know that guy's going to try to see if he can charge a little bit harder. I just I don't understand how these guys are able to recover this quick and continue to nail it down and ride at 150%. <laughs> so I can talk more. But shit, I'm going to go buy some cold medicine and maybe a big-ass burrito. That's kind of what I want. I haven't eaten all day. 
been running a little bit of a fever. But just remember, that dislike button spreads the coronavirus. So I hope you have your toilet paper and your water. Next question is the Nationals of this summer. We will not be there on a 450, but we may be there on something. 